After watching this video, you will never doubt God about your situation. It is about a family who were raised in the ways of the Lord by their father. Unfortunately, he passed on, and one of his sons, the eldest, chose a different path for his life. He believed that he was called to be a witch doctor, and so he began to live like one. Shortly after, things started to work against his siblings' families, and their mother lost faith in God. When she inquired of the witch doctor, he demanded that his siblings made a sacrifice to the gods he served, in order to restore peace and prosperity in their lives. I wanted you all, that is, you, and your siblings, to be present in this meeting. Why are they absent? They're unavoidably absent. But I can relay every detail from the meeting to them. I would have preferred that they were all present, because this matter is critical, and as matter of fact, needs urgent attention. That notwithstanding, I'll go on. I want to ask again. What is your plan concerning the sacrifice your brother asked to make? Are you now ready to do it? Mother. We've had this conversation before, and we informed you that we'll never do it. We're born again, and can never involve ourselves in such. Why are you so stubborn? Can't you see all that is happening? There has not been any progress in this family for over five years now. Are you not tired of remaining in the same place in your life? The Bible says that God has made everything beautiful in its time. We strongly believe that things will turn around at the right time. When? When will the right time be? What you all have agreed to do is unnecessary. This is a simple thing. Just get the items that were requested, go to the shrine, and offer it to the gods, and everyone will be free. God forbid. We will never do that. John 8, 36 says, Therefore if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. We will stand strong on our words, and wait on the deliverance of God. He will surely deliver us. <laughs> It is obvious that this your God is not reliable. Where has he been all these years that you've been through hardship, pains, and thorns? Where is he now? If he's truly able to deliver you, then let him prove himself. Why did he abandon you all these years, despite your belief in him? I've given you enough time to figure out what to do concerning your situation, but it is obvious that you are not ready to take action. I'll initiate the process on your behalf. Which means that I'll purchase all the items required, and take them to him to do the sacrifice. I cannot sit back anymore and watch you suffer. I've endured the suffering and ridicule for too long. Mother. You'll do no such thing. If you decide to go ahead, you're on your own. We're disconnected from every altar that is not of God by fire. I wasn't expecting to see you. What are the items for? I brought them on behalf of your siblings. Since they've refused to offer the sacrifice you requested, I came to do it. Please, take these items and do the needful so that my children can have peace of mind and happiness. I want to see each one of you progress in life. These things don't work that way. If I must accept the gifts, then they should be here present. The sacrifice cannot be done on their behalf. Please, I'm begging you. Listen to the cries of your old mother, and set my children free. They vowed that they will never step foot in this environment, so this is the only way out. I am not the one receiving the sacrifice. The gods cannot accept this. Please go and convince your children to do it themselves. I cannot help you. You will not believe why our mother called to meet with all of us. Why did she call for the meeting? She wants us to make the sacrifice that Kenneth, our oldest brother requested for. She's fed up with the way things are going in our lives. Impossible. Why did she think we will ever consider that? We are all strongly rooted in God, and will not offer sacrifices to any other gods. That was exactly what I said to her. I mean, how can I teach my congregation to always believe in God in all circumstances? and then go behind to do otherwise. I cannot claim to pray to God and trust in Him, but at the slightest sign of trouble, I run to bow down to an idol. No, you cannot do that. But why did you miss the meeting? 
My husband's attitude towards me keeps getting worse every day. He's been taking away certain privileges from me and our son. First, he took away the car claiming that he's now the only one allowed to drive it. Then he stopped me from working. Now, he's insisting that none of my family members should visit us. He believes your presence brings bad omen. I don't know the next thing he'll do. Maybe send us out of the house. Thay is not funny. Why would he associate our family with bad luck? Is it because of what we're passing through? This is only a phase, and it will soon be over. I cannot wait for it to end, I'm tired. The only son I have who was born healthy, and has grown to become a teenager, suddenly fell sick. And just like that, without any proper scientific explanations, lost the ability to do the things he would normally do. He cannot walk, stand, talk, or eat properly. He's currently experiencing paralysis on the right side of his body. Because of that, my husband accused me, claiming that I've inflicted the sickness on him for selfish reasons. I've told him that I have nothing to do with what is happening, but he doesn't believe me. What else can I do to convince him? Sis, everything will be alright. Even Calvin your son will be restored to perfect health. I'm faced with a lot of challenges too. My ministry is constantly declining, my business has been slowing down every day, but none of these issues will force me into idol worship. We will keep praying and waiting on God. <gasps> you need to leave now before my husband gets home. He should be on his way by now. Please tell me the truth. Did you see anyone going in or out of my house, in my absence? It was her brother Ernest. He was the only one that came visiting today. Thank you. Welcome home. I made you your favorite. What did I tell you about bringing any of your family members into my home? He came to tell me something really important. That's all. I do not care to know why he came. All I'm asking is that they stay far away from my home. It's bad enough that you connived with your brother Kenneth to destroy my son's life. Now you want to do the same to me. You better avoid me. If I notice any changes in my business or anything that concerns me, I will hold you accountable. You need to believe me, Steve. I have no hound in our son's misfortune. I'm still believing God to restore his health. And I know that one day, it will happen. Lies. Pretense. Stop using the name of God to cover up your wickedness. It will not change anything. Ernest. Isn't it too late? Why are you just coming home? I closed from the store early, but you know that I also have a ministry. I went to the church to prepare for tomorrow's sermon. Where are the proceeds from the store? You cannot tell me that you came home empty-handed again today. It won't happen again, I promise. That was what you said the last time, but you failed to keep your promise. None of your ventures are yielding any returns. Why don't you close down your ministry and try something else? The attendance has dropped by over 80%. This is beyond any ordinary venture. It's a calling that I must respond to. I'm tired, Ernest, and soon, I'll leave. I'm saying this so that it will not come as a surprise to you. I cannot believe you're saying this. You were supposed to encourage me now that I need it the most. I need you to be by my side, please. Stay, and soon, everything will be fine. As time progressed, things got worse for both Ernest and Precious, his sister. So Precious set up a meeting with Kenneth, their eldest brother. I'm not comfortable in this environment. Can we go somewhere else? No, I'll like it here. I have just a few questions to ask you. Why have you chosen to afflict us? Why are you making things to work against us? And finally, why did you choose this path after we were raised in the ways of the Lord? This is my calling. There is an ability within me to do the supernatural and to prefer solutions to people through spiritual powers. But what you're doing is rather causing destruction. Our family began to experience setbacks the moment you chose this lifestyle. Things have never been the same for us all. 
You may not be in support of my craft, but I can assure you that I have nothing to do with whatever is happening to you. I never did anything against any of you. You are my blood, and nothing can change that. Then how can you explain everything that is happening to us? It all started right after you made this decision. I don't know. I wish I had the answers you're looking for, but I don't. All I know is that the gods I serve has requested that you both make a sacrifice, and all this will be over. I cannot offer anything to a god that is not the Almighty God, the Creator of Heaven and Earth. Remember how much God loves you, brother. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. What this means is that you can still turn to him today in repentance and his love will cover you. We are the light of the world, so our purpose and agenda should be to depopulate the kingdom of hell. The only one who has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy is the devil. Do not allow yourself to be an instrument in his hands. I am not an instrument for evil works. I only help people achieve that, which they ordinarily cannot do for themselves. I want you to think about God's love for you, in comparison with your works. If that is all you came to say to me, you can leave, let me finish up my drink. But I'll advise you to do the sacrifice. It is easier to do it, than enduring suffering. Mother? You didn't tell me you were coming. What is wrong with you? You haven't seen your mother in several months, and now that I'm here to see you, you're unhappy. You won't understand. This visit has already put me in trouble. My husband has instructed that none of my family members visit me. I don't know how he does it. He probably has a camera somewhere, but whenever any of you come around, he must know. And I'll get the punishment for that. What? What manner of treatment is that? How can he call himself a husband and treat you like a servant? Even a servant deserves better treatment than that. I wish he were at home, I'll teach him how to treat a woman. Please. Don't say anything to him. I don't want more trouble. The one I have already, is enough. How's my grandson? Any improvement in his condition? He keeps getting worse. I don't know what else to do. He's in his room. I'll check on him. That is very serious. What do we do? I don't know. I've done everything I was asked to do, but he's getting worse. He's still taking his medication. Precious. Keep your beliefs aside, and make the sacrifice, so that your family will be liberated from perpetual suffering. This is the main reason I came, just do it already and soon, you'll forget all about it. I don't like the condition of my grandson. Mother, my home is at the verge of breaking, my son is critically ill. I have too many challenges facing me. The last thing you'll expect from me at this point, is to worship other gods. I've said my piece. Do it. I'm sorry for calling you out here. I remembered that I shouldn't visit you, that's why I requested that you come over. I've been thinking about everything, and I came to the conclusion that the way we've been treating this issue is wrong. We have nothing to lose if we offer the sacrifice. It will not change our minds about who God is to us, because we still believe in Him. But if we do not do it, there's a possibility that this will never end. It keeps getting worse. My church membership is now down to four, my business is depreciating daily, and now my wife wants to leave me. If that happens, my whole world will crumble. I think we should do it. You can't be serious. Even if the world is falling apart, we will not do it. Have you forgotten that we are not alone? Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We will run our race with endurance. 
I believe that the end of this journey will be glorious, but if we cut it short by worshipping other gods, how can we find out? Our resolve should be like Daniel who said, that he believes that God Almighty is able to save him, but even if he chooses not to save him, he will not bow to other gods. That is my stand, and it's unchanging. It's just so difficult. I don't understand why we're caught in this trap. I don't understand also, but the ways of the Lord are sometimes beyond human comprehension. Let us fast for seven days, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., after which we'll pray for restoration of all lost glory. Let's come together and diligently seek the face of God concerning this issue, too we'll chase 10,000. Agreed. We'll do it. We will begin tomorrow. Thank you Lord for the strength to carry out today's fast. I pray specially for the soul of my brother, Kenneth. Your word says, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. By your death and resurrection, you have paid the ultimate price for us. I have reminded him about you, Lord I ask that you draw his soul to yourself. Let your Holy Spirit minister to him. Please, align us to your purpose for our lives, so that we will live to bring you glory, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. O Lord, restore our glory. Your word says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Lord restore it. Isaiah 61, 7 says, you will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. Because you got a double dose of trouble and more than your share of contempt, your inheritance in the land will be doubled and your joy go on forever. I declare this upon our lives, in Jesus' name, Amen. What kind of life am I living? This was not how I was raised. My father raised me and my siblings in the ways of the Lord. I should be an example to them. I know that I have a calling upon my life to help proffer solutions to people, but the way I'm going about it is wrong. Since I started this, I have never done any good with it. When people come here to meet me, what they always ask for is how to perpetuate evil. I lost everything when I decided to follow this path, yet nothing has been added to my life. Every day, I'm drawing closer to the grave, and I know the truth, which is, whether I'm ready or not, I'll stand before the one who created me, and give account of my life. When I stand before him, is this what I'll say? How I helped brother to paralyze brother, or how I helped wife to destroy husband? No way. This cannot be what I was created for. I should make positive and long-lasting impact in the world, so that when I'm gone, I'll be remembered for it. And there will be joy in heaven for my sake. I must make amends with God. Brother, I'm so happy to see you in my home. It's been several years since I experienced this. I know. The narrative is about to change. From now onwards, I'll visit more frequently. Some days ago, the words you said to me the last time we met struck deeply in my heart. That Bible passage that says, For the word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any toadst sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It became my reality. The words that I've heard over the years all started coming back to me. I became restless in my spirit, until I made the decision to come back to God. I've come today to declare it openly that I am dissociating myself from my past life of idolatry. I will no longer have anything to do with the worship of other gods. I also want to thank you and our brother for not giving in. If you had offered the sacrifice, that would serve as a gateway for this bondage to continue to coming generations. I insisted that you did it because I was under the oppression of powers beyond me. And honestly, I never did anything against any of you. I guess these things happened so that you will have a reason to pray me out of that bondage. Your words of encouragement and prayers have helped me. I am so grateful. I am so happy that you are back to God now. After these conversations, we will pray until you are completely disconnected from that old life. We will pray, and after that, I'll go and clean up myself. 
Welcome home. Before you do anything, let me explain why he came. I didn't invite him, and I didn't know that he was coming. What are you talking about? My brother Kenneth, he came visiting. He did? I hope you offered him food to eat, and something to drink. How is he doing? I haven't seen him in a while. I thought you didn't want to see any of them in this house. Why? They can come around whenever they want. All they have to do is inform us ahead of time. <laughs> Guess what? Our son is fine now. Everything he was suffering went away instantly, but he's sleeping now. Wow! Glory to God. Thank you for helping to restore my faith in God. I will never go back again. As the first child of this family, I'll uphold the unfailing truth of the gospel of God which has shaped our lives from the beginning. Our children, and children's children must serve the true and living God. I have experienced both sides of life, and I can say for sure, that serving God is the ultimate, and best decision anyone can ever make. I'm so happy to see that you're back to God and to us. Ernest learned a great lesson from his sister's actions about an unwavering faith in God. They all received instant freedom and deliverance from bondage. Kenneth's experience served as a lesson and because of that, many generations of their family all served God, in spirit and in truth. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification to be informed whenever we upload a new video. Also like and comment on this video. Thanks for watching. We're grateful for your constant support. See you in the next one. God bless you.